With regards to this particular verse, just one second, let's read it. You read the Yusuf Ali translation? Uh, I don't think it's any different to the one that I've got here, which is Sahih International. If there is, Allah says, mention, when Allah says, Oh Jesus, indeed I will take you and raise you to myself and purify you from those who disbelieve and make those who follow you. Okay, in the bracket it says, in submission to Allah alone, superior to those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. Remember, it's not only talking about the first century or the second century or the fourth century. It's talking about a time period until the day of resurrection. Yes? If you see most of the people that who believe in a religion, I think the Abrahamic faith stands out. And in the Abrahamic faith, we don't have just the Christians. The Christians came later. It was the Jews who came before them. Do the Jews believe in one God? Yes, they do. Were there some Jews who accepted Jesus as the Messiah? Yes, there were. Were those people persecuted? Yes, they were. Just like the Christians were persecuted, these Messianic Jews were also persecuted. Now we are talking about the time frame. Obviously, Bob the Builder would want to put it only of a time during the time. Whatever it is, no, Allah says here, until the day of resurrection. Until the day of resurrection, all the religions in the world. In India, there are billions, a billion uh, Hindus maybe. But do you see that faith superior today? No, it is the monotheistic faith. It is the monotheistic faith around the world. Whether you go to a place like America, all the way to Australia, you'll see every religion. From every religion, the one that stands out are the Abrahamic faiths. And those people, they claim they are monotheistic. They believe in one God. So over here, what is historically inaccurate, I don't really follow. It wasn't just in the time of Jesus. As the verse clearly says, until the day of resurrection and this is a question to bob the builder why did he actually just limit it to this early century or maybe even during the time of jesus okay yeah, may i reply so um hashim actually has not addressed my question at all this is uh, just a, a kind of repeat of how he avoided the questions at our first debate I asked him very clearly, which group could he identify as Muslims from the first century? And what was his evidence? I don't remember hearing him mention any group. He just talked generally about monotheism. Is he saying that the Jews of the first century, who all believed in one God, but many of whom who rejected Jesus, because they believed in one God, are somehow Muslims? No, of course he's not. He's talking particularly about people who follow Jesus. So, the claim of the Quran is very clear to those who want to listen, to those who want to take it seriously without manipulating the text. The text stays, Behold, Allah said, O Jesus, I will take thee and raise thee to myself and clear thee of the falsehoods of those who blaspheme. I will make those who follow you superior to those who reject faith. This is a promise of Allah. It's a promise applicable to the first century. So that means that there are a group of followers of Jesus Christ in the first century to whom Allah has said, I'm going to make this group superior over every group that rejects faith. He said, I did not answer his question. Maybe he's not listening or not paying attention when I clearly said there were Jews who accepted Jesus Christ as a prophet and as a Messiah and they believed in one God. This is what Muslim is at the time of Jesus. A Muslim would be one who submits to one God. He believes in his prophets. He believes in the revelation of God and he believes in the angel and the life after death. This is what Iman is. It is not just believing in one God that makes you a, um, a, belie a, a Muslim. It is basically the whole package. So, who is superior? He's saying the Christians were superior. Really? If the Christians were superior, who was persecuting them in the first century? Who was killing them? They couldn't pronounce their faith openly. They were basically ridiculed and persecuted. But Paul himself, the one that you want to call yourself after, Pauline, he himself, the Jews were persecuting you as well. So you see, this, no wonder he's only sticking to that particular era in the first, fourth, first uh, century until the fourth century. But Allah says very clearly, until the day of resurrection. He hasn't addressed that bit. He only likes a bit where he says the, 
the followers of Jesus Christ. Allah did not say the worshippers of Jesus Christ. A follower doesn't become someone that you worship. He has to get that right because, because what you're doing is you're looking at only a small bit of the verse that agrees with his agenda and he leaves out the rest of it, completely ignoring the context of the particular verse. Yeah, Alright, thank you for that lovely sermon, Imam Hashim. Unfortunately, he didn't actually address the point. We're talking about a historical claim in the Quran. That is what this conversation started on. Stop trying to get off the topic. Now, it says in the Quran, this is a question you still not have addressed. I will make those who follow thee, Jesus, superior to those who reject faith. Now, by those who reject faith, Dean, we would assume that it is those who reject the truths that we find about Jesus in the Quran. What are those truths that we find in the Quran about Jesus? He was born of a Virgin Mary. He was, cru he was not crucified, but taken up to heaven. He preached Taweed. He submitted to Allah. And he called other people to follow this deen. And that he was his prophet. So where is this group that believes in the first century that Christ was born of a virgin, was the Messiah promised in the Old Testament, was not crucified, taught Taweed, and told others that he was the prophet of God? Where is that group, Hashim? Okay, he's made the error once again, and he he thinks he actually thinks that this is talking about the Christians. He kept mentioning that my apost apolos the apolos what's it apostolic, apostolic group apostolic. yeah apostolic group. It's not talking about the Christians, Bob the Builder. It is talking about people who accepted Jesus, who followed Jesus, and who believed in one God. Yes, and there were Jews. If you want to be specific, yes, they're called Jews or the Messianic Jews to be more specific, who followed Jesus and who believed in one God. And they did not consider Jesus as God, like he says in verse 4, 171. Yes, please. Okay, so Hashim has made two points that I want to come back on. I think we finally, finally, after the fourth time of asking, kind of got a group that Hashim has almost identified as being the followers of Jesus. Now, let's be clear. The verse in the Quran says that he will make them superior until the day of resurrection. So that means from one generation to the next, these followers, this community, will be superior until the day of resurrection. Now we would expect at the 7th century that these Messianic Jews, as now Hashim has identified, would all become Muslim. And taking you at your word, considering you a man of honour, I would ask you now to bring forth your evidence to show me this Messianic Jewish community that existed from the 1st to the 4th century that believed the following. Jesus was born of a Virgin Mary. Jesus was not crucified on a cross. Jesus taught Islamic Taweed. That he taught that he was a prophet of Allah. Show me this group and show me your evidence for them. Uh, I think, I don't know what it is. Either he's not listening to the conversation that I'm actually telling him. I keep saying that we are not talking, we are not talking about the Christians. Okay, let's, let's continue. So yeah, once again, bomb. I don't know, not once again. Yeah, once again, I have to tell you this. We are not talking about Christians. Please get this really, really clear because this is something that you keep missing all the time. I don't know why. We are not talking about Christians in this verse. Why you ask me to show me Christians or the Messianic Jews about or whatever it is from that century only? I'll give you an example. Yes, those people who had followed Jesus were the Messianic Jews. I didn't say they were only the Messianic Jews. Today, people, the Muslims themselves, they believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, like you greatly, uh, uh, clearly said, and it says so in, in the Quran that they follow that Jesus, uh, uh, follow Jesus in the sense about his 
great works, for example, his miracles, also mentioned in the Quran, that he, he basically rose people from the dead, that he basically uh, healed the people who were blind and lepers and the sick and so on. We believe these things. These things are common knowledge amongst the Muslims. We believe in that. Okay. Thank you for that lovely sermon, Thank you, Imam welcome. Hashim. So, once again, Hashim has not brought forth any evidence at all. Not a shred of evidence to support the claim that I'm testing. I am still waiting for you to bring forward evidence that substantiates that there is a community of Messianic Jews who claim that Jesus was the Messiah of the Old Testament, that he was a prophet, that he taught Taweed, that he was born of a Virgin Mary, and that he was not crucified. I have not yet heard you bring in forth any evidence at all. All the evidence, all the evidence from the history, from the fourth, first to the fourth century, supports the idea that no such group existed. No such group existed. We know about the Ebionites. We know about the Valentinians. We know about the Arians. We know about apostolic Christianity. We know about the Gnostics. We know about the Roman pagans. We know about Greek philosophy. There's plenty of evidence about what was the common beliefs and practices of the time. We know about the Sadducees. We know about the Pharisees. We know about the Herodians. We know about all of these different groups. And yet, we find no evidence of this so-called Islamic community that is identified in the Quran. The Quran has made a claim that can be historically tested. It can be historically investigated. And when we investigate it, when we test it, we find there's no evidence to substantiate it. That leaves you with one of two positions. You can either take a leap of faith, as Hashim does, and says, in spite of all the evidence, I will believe anyway. Or you can go where the evidence leads you. And the evidence leads you to the conclusion that the Quran is in error.